So we made it to Sky at Portray at the minute. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, Aaron and Stuart, thank you very much for a really enjoyable wedding day. I hope you have uh, many years of happiness and health together. So just landed in Sky last night, slept in the ditch, <laughs> as usual. Uh, I'm going to head up now to the Quarang. Yesterday it was Mediterranean. It was really, really, really good. Uh, today, you can hardly see one foot in front of you. I was already up at the Quarang this morning, about 6 o'clock. Very misty, so I'm waiting for the mist to clear. Then I'm going to go up and have a have a look for some suitable pitches. Uh, but say, I'm here for the week, so just mulling about. Just had a nice breakfast there. Oh, love the sound of that there. Just had a nice breakfast there. Uh, just going to mooch about. Uh, see how many good spots I can get in. Um, but yeah, lovely spot. Three is round. Just have a wee look. See the mist coming in off the sea still. It's actually clearing. It was, you couldn't have seen out that far. You couldn't have seen the boats this morning. But yeah, lovely job. Talk just a bit. So I've made my way round to um, Elgo on the Isle Sky. Um, the intention being to grab one of the little fishing boats there and uh, hiking a lift over to Loch Kursk. Loch Kursk, if I can pronounce it right. And he's agreed he's going to pick me up uh, the following afternoon. So it'll be a bit of a bit of a hike up and tend to get up into one of the Coolin Mountains. Not the biggest one, but it's certainly the steepest. That's uh, sure sure and a scree. Sure and a scree, sure and a scree. Uh, but absolutely if, if I do make it to the top, there's absolutely breathtaking views to be had. And that's where I intend to pitch. Not pitch tonight. Had intended to pitch on the Quarang. But oh my god, man, the midges, Jesus, I thought they were bad in County Kerry. Oh dear. In County Kerry, especially in the Black Valley, when there's a midge attack, I put on my, um, uh, it's called jungle formula, it's like a sort of a smidge spray. And it keeps them at bay and makes them tolerable. I had got out earlier to take that drone footage, and clouds of them had just descend and started in my eyes, up my nose, in my ear, in my mouth, and no matter how much I spread, I mean, God knows what chemicals I have in my hair now. I suppose no worse than you women, like with all your hair dyes and this, that, and other, whatever you put into it, but <laughs> at the end of the day, um, I had the drone out, I put the drone away, I raced back to the car, and as I was sitting in the car, <laughs> trying to get the midges off me, this Chinese woman 
tapped the window. I says, you like that? You like that? I says, pardon love? You like that? And she handed me a brand new head net. Bit of a packet, there must be coming wee multi-packs. I says, oh my goodness, that's, that's really good of you. Thanks very much. So I was able to get those views of the Quarang uh, with the head net that was tolerable, but they were still getting through the head net too. Jeez, they're, one of them was wearing a kilt. I'm convinced of it. But anyway, uh, I was up at the Old Man of Star first thing this morning. Uh, I was around there at half five, six, waiting for sunrise. And there was a good stiff breeze, uh, no midges. But it was great. So I managed to get some footage of the Old Man of Star. Um, problem I had with it was uh, the wee drone I'm using, the wee Mavic Mini, uh, kept giving me um, high wind warnings. And at one stage I had lost it all together, I didn't know where it was going. <laughs> so I just hit, returned to home. Still no sign, still no sign. I was in cinematic mode for all you drone people who know what I'm talking about. Still no sign. I said, oh my God, it's been swept away by the wind. So then changed it to sport mode and it was able, the wee motors were then were starting to suck diesel. I was able to come back and uh, eventually I heard it and uh, just landed at my feet. So well done DGA for your return to home technology. <laughs> also got lost in the clouds earlier as well, had to hit return to home. So we're going well. We're going well. So what's the plan for tomorrow morning? Uh, I'll be sleeping in the car tonight. I have a Thermarest full length mat. Uh, but I can sprawl out full length in the back of the car there, no problem at all. And uh, slum it in the car. And in the morning I'll get make a final pack up and go as light as I can. And bring some wafers with me, uh, plenty of water. Although I'm bringing a water filter because I should be able to uh, use some of the water in the lock there. But uh, hopefully, for God's sake, there's a bit of a breeze. Otherwise, it'll be, it'll be sitting in the sea, trying to escape the me bastards from hell. <laughs> so I shall see you in the morning, and I shall bid you good night. And, uh, yeah, see you in the morning. Good night. So just about to jump on the Misty Isle uh, to go over to the Coolin Mountain Range behind me, Loch Kursk. So we'll see how that goes. Midgey wise there's a nice breeze at the minute which is going to hopefully, fingers crossed, keep the wee bastards away. But <laughs> So yeah, just waiting I suppose for uh, a few more people to arrive and then over we go. I think it takes about 45 minutes to get behind me, but uh, so the plan is uh, to make summit on Kursk, or sorry, on uh, Shurnus Gree and uh, do a bit of trekking around the, the lock, etc. But we'll see, I'll bring you along with me and you can, you can have a wee jukey. But yeah, such a beautiful spot, as I'm sure you'll agree. Absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, so, see you in a bit.
So we've just arrived. And I'm going to make my torturous trip to the top of Shurness Scree. Beautiful conditions. Quite warm. I'll be peeling some layers off. Let's go. Try and find this path they're talking about. Stepping stones across a river. Hasn't made much rain, so it should be passable. So yeah, looking forward to this. Talk to you in a bit. See the uh, the Outer Hebrides, Isle of Egg, Jura, and just the tail tip of Stornoway. But I think the, the most spectacular view is the uh, view I have here, looking down, winding around towards the uh, Loch Kursk and the Dark Cullen. Absolutely stunning. Uh, get a, very very lucky actually with the with the weather in so much as um, it's not covered in cloud <laughs> and mist. The Isle of Skye been known as the Misty Isle, but yeah, certainly. And I'm just round the corner there, the the Highlands. So quite a, quite an amazing spot. The mist is starting to roll in a little bit as the sun goes down. Uh, you'll find the mist will start to, to lift and you'll probably not see this view uh, in the morning. There's a good possibility it'll be, be shrouded in mist up here. But uh, at the same time, uh, the forecast I've been keeping an eye on says it'll be okay. But for those of you who are interested, because um, it was a summit climb, I had to go very light. So I'm in the Jack Wolfskin one-man gossamer. Uh, I have the little OEX sleeping mat. I don't know if you'll see that in there. And the old Corinthian Defence 4. Because it is actually quite. Oh, just blown away with these views. <laughs> Incredible. So, anyway, quite chilly, uh, a wee bit of altitude. And for, you, for those of you who are interested, I parked at Elgol on the west side of Skye. Uh, you can just sit away in the distance there. You'll probably not see much. But I got a little boat out, uh, the Misty Isles, uh, to the little uh, jetty they have here at Kursk. And I made my way round to the western side of Loch Kursk and sort of corkscrewed round. Uh, the first leg, as you've probably seen earlier, it wasn't too bad at all. Uh, but it started to get steeper as the climb progressed. Now, Shurness Grey is only, I think it's about 1,500 to 200 
or rather 2,000 feet. But the, the last five or 600 feet uh, is a bit of a climb, a bit of a struggle. Uh, actually, I was doing a bit of climbing, but I think I possibly went up a wrong route. <laughs> Probably the, the steepest, the proper climbing part of it, climbing over rocks and I could have done with a rope at one stage, but anyway, you live and learn. <laughs> uh, the, the paths aren't really well defined once you start your ascent, uh, once you get past the lock. Uh, so it's pretty much a case of just looking in the direction you want to go and just head for it as best you can. Uh, but yeah, getting a bit chilly now. Uh, I would love to come up here in the winter. Uh, all snow capped and such a beautiful sight that would be. Absolutely stunning. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to have myself a coffee and get an early night. Uh, have the puffer on. There's a chilly with a wee bit of altitude. Uh, actually, down feathers. I look like a shot pigeon or a bit of feather coming out everywhere. <laughs> but yeah, so and at breakfast in the morning, I'll see what the views are like. Uh, maybe throw the wee drone up again. Uh, see if we can get some clearer air because the sun will be on the other side this time. So if we can get golden air first thing in the morning uh, when it's not as breezy. And I'll get uh, I'll get some drone footage with the, the sunrise and some more footage. Make myself breakfast and uh, then we'll head back down to the... Hopefully the boat turns up. <laughs> All right, it's a long walk over a few peaks and rounds, probably about a 20, 25 kilometer walk back to the car. So 45 minutes in a boat, I think will do me. <laughs> All right, I'll uh, sign off for now and I'll see you in the morning. I'm just going to hibernate now and uh, read a few bits and pieces on my phone. And then just listen to the absolute silence apart from the the wind coming down from the, the coolant. So I'll leave you with the last We look. And as you can see, sun's starting to go down behind the Outer Hebrides, behind the coolants, and you can see the clouds, very atmospheric looking. On the top of the, I think that's uh, Bla Brennan, uh, the highest peak in the dark coolants. Absolutely lovely. Would have been nice if we got an inversion looking down on the clouds that would be that would be spectacular but I'm just glad that we can see the bloody things. <laughs> Alright, talk to you in the morning. Bye bye. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Just up for sunrise here. Sweep you round. Absolutely stunningly, amazingly beautiful. There's no words to describe up here. It certainly is one of the most <coughs> amazing pitches and best views, certainly in the British Isles, if not within the world. Absolutely stunning. Sun's not quite up, but you can see she's on her way. Beautiful, beautiful morning. <laughs> I was uh, hoping for a cloud inversion, but uh, I'll settle for clear skies. <laughs> what a stunning pitch. So I've just had breakfast, had a coffee, had my beans and sausages. A uh, couple of wee yachts there in the bay, I don't know whether you can make them out or not, little white specks. But uh, the sun is starting to starting to hit the top of the coolants here, very subtly. Uh, the air is nice and clear, so I think what I'll do is try some more drone footage, just to see what we can get. Imagine having this view all to yourself, and all you have to do is walk and climb. It's well worth it.
Absolutely stunning. So as, as always, when you're wild camping in these beautiful places, leave no trace whatsoever. I have the beer cans buried under a big rock there and a wine bottle. I'll never find it. <laughs> Just joking. One last view of this beautiful vista. It'll not be my last either. Right. Let's go. That's me back down again and I'm just waiting on the boat. I'm a little bit early for it. And I can see this little guy there must be lobstering. I've seen him bring it in a few pots. But yeah, fantastic day. Didn't feel much in the way down, I was just uh, enjoying the moment. So we'll see you when we get back to Elgol. Back to where the adventure started in Port Three. Such a beautiful morning. Sun has just started to come up over the bay there. Uh, mist rolling off the hills sets the scene. Absolutely beautiful. I'm just getting ready now to make the journey to back home again. Uh, but I'll leave you with a couple of takeaways I have from Sky. Uh, basically, primarily the the reason for the trip was to climb Sureness Scree. Now I wanted to do this in October, November time when it was a bit more autumnal. Uh, but the wedding, uh, my son's wedding, brought that forward a little bit. But no matter, blessed and gifted with such beautiful weather this past week. Uh, I have a few wild spots that I have um, logged and noted for uh, future autumnal adventures on the Isle of Skye. Uh, maybe Ben will venture out with me or whoever would like to come along or I'll just go solo again. At the same time, um, Skye is one of the original wilderness places left in the British Isles. It is truly a magnificent uh, wild place for wild camping. The season for wild camping is not really June, July, August, not least of all because of the midges, and locals will tell you that as well. But certainly the amount of, of tourists, and we all know why there are so many tourists at the minute, a lot of people staycationing. I'm not even going to say that word. But uh, the reason my, uh, as I say, coming in October, November would be less people about. The less people about for me the better but yeah so thanks very much for for watching anyway i hope you enjoyed the footage of uh, sure scree i certainly enjoyed ticking that one off the box uh, my next adventure if you would like to join me will be to meet with pat noon in galway and i'll leave that out there you can put that in your diaries <laughs> But yeah, hopefully maybe getting down to see Pat in Galway. And in the not too distant future, just trying to organise, tie up a few loose ends. So uh, I'm going now off to get breakfast and maybe start thinking about packing the car and heading back to 
purgatory. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Look after yourselves, look after each other. God bless, and I'll see you soon.